Ricky Thompson joins us, 365 Sports. And, Ricky, thanks for your time. Would you consider what you have seen, and you're right there on the sideline, is that – and and – I guess one of the words to describe where Baylor might be is kind of in a malaise. Uh, yeah, I think maybe uh, it, it's really hard to to wrap your arms around it. Truthfully, I've I've seen a lot of football, a lot of games over a lot of years with a lot of different teams, and I think sometimes that teams struggle with identity, and I know that sounds funny but I think they do and I I think that's a lot of what's happened here I just don't think we go back to 21 a lot because that was a team that was 12 and two fifths of the country there there was an identity there you knew that Trevor Bernard, Jalen Petrie, JT Woods on defense were going to make plays you know what kind of defense we were going to run it was going to be aggressive not a lot of press outside with uh, corners because you didn't have to offensively Downhill running game, you had a good offensive line, uh, you had Abram Smith, and you had Tyke one outside who could really fly. And I'm just not sure that I have a real identity to this team on either side of the ball at this point. And that's not being critical. That's just what I see as I watch that, it, that it's hard to tell. And with that, it's really hard to describe what the major issues are and why this team is three and five at this point. Yeah, Ricky, it turns into whack-a-mole, right, when you don't know what the identity is because you have to just week to week go, okay, last week it was how can Baylor do what they need to do against Iowa State? Well, now, because they don't have an identity, it's not like they they can just go back to, okay, this is what we do and we're going to do it against Houston. What will Houston give them? So you're you're kind of solving one problem while another one pops up. Well, yeah, and and remember, too, that every team you play is different. Their identity is different. You have to adjust to that. Houston's offense is going to be nothing similar to what Iowa State ran. Uh, They're going to spread it out. We know what they do. We know what Holgerson runs. We've seen it in the past. I don't think it will be anything that we're not familiar with. And in that regard, I do feel good that defensively, we've been seeing three corners in the game a lot now. (laughs) A couple of those guys are really inexperienced, and I think uh, that was exposed a little bit last Saturday, but I really don't have a problem with that. I I like those guys playing. Uh, You know that a veteran receiver on occasion is going to flip that guy's hips the wrong way, and he's going to look a little silly. But uh, they're good players, and they're going to be really good as they develop. But right now, Sometimes it's a little painful, but I do like that adjustment very much that you see most of the time you'll see a corner out there on the slot guy. And I'm guessing with Houston's offense and the spread that they run, I bet you see uh, three corners in the game most of the time on Saturday. Ricky, there was a, the media this week, and, and Dave Aranda talked about how he feels like they're just so close. You know, it's just a matter of making some plays here and there, and the players talked, and they kind of said the same thing of watching film of, like, guys are where they need to be, they just don't make the play or whatnot. How much do you attribute the struggles to just things like missed tackles, or is it in your mind more schematic uh, in, in the way that they are, you know, defending or, or going on the offense? Is, is it breakdown to as simple as just clean up the execution and that's all there is to it, or is it deeper than that in your mind? Well, Craig, I think I think cleaning those things up would change both sides of the ball dramatically. But uh, I still think maybe you have to go to some scheme things too. Uh, so I, I I would say both categories. But I can just tell you defensively, man, if we just tackle, uh, <laughs> well, we we, yeah. we could we could have saved a ton of yards in the running game. We've had guys in position, Cincinnati in particular. I mean, we particularly late in the game, we had guys in position to make plays, uh, which tells me that probably have the wrong, I mean, the right defense called, mm-hmm. but we just don't make a play. And I think that comes with confidence. Uh, I've talked before, once you make two or three plays, uh, that that just comes with you expect you're going to make it. But, uh, man, I, I just think tackling-wise this may be – as poor a tackling team as we've seen in a long time. And just changing that could 
really make a difference, particularly defensively, because uh, everyone knows our run defense has struggled. And I attribute much of that to tackle. Can't stop the run and you can't run the ball. Uh, we talked to Phil Bennett about that on Monday night. That's a deadly combination. Well, it is. Uh, and we, everybody talks about the spread, run the spread, run the spread. And you know me, receiver, I love the spread. But most of these spreads teams run the heck out of the football. Yes, they do. I mean, they, they go for 250, 300 yards in the running game out of the spread. So just because you go to the spread doesn't mean you're not going to run it. And I can tell you, Houston will try to run it out of the spread, and we better be ready to stop it there. And sometimes I think even more difficult it is to stop the run out of the spread because of those linemen split. Man, they spread you out. Uh, you have holes that are created without even blocking anybody. You just make contact, turn your body one way or the other. If you're the offensive lineman, and that's an option for you. you. You don't have to push one way or the other. Just get your best position, and those holes are gaping. We've seen it in the past here, and I just think that no matter what the other team is running, you have to stop the run to really be successful, and I know teams can come out and throw for five, four or 500 yards, but I'd rather see that than them run for 300 because that means they're dominating the game and they're doing it up front, and at the same time, they're running clock, and that that's hard to beat. Ricky, do you think that they need to evaluate which kind of talent they're going after? Because, I mean, I guess they would if they changed their scheme too. Well, I, I think they're doing that. Hopefully they're doing that, and hopefully – with, with that, they develop into what schemes that they particularly want to run and what type players they want. I think we've mentioned, I think these last couple of recruiting classes have been pretty good, but two doesn't do it. You've got to stack them on top of each other, and I think everybody knows that teams recruit to their systems. So I think going forward uh, – during these last four games or at the end of the season, we've got to decide what that system is, and then you've got to recruit to it. And I don't think it, it it's misleading to think you have to have five-star guys to win because a lot of these kids in high school develop over time, and if you're getting three, four-star kids, that's good enough if you're in the right scheme, and I think you win with them. We've done it here before. We've done it forever here. So I, I think the main thing is, figure out who you are, recruit the players that fit in that, and then go run it and and don't go back and forth between what you run. Ricky, it really does seem like so much of this revolves like at the, the base level around just making plays, I mean, ultimately, and then it all can become contagious from there. And it seemed like Keytron Jackson was a guy that was just starting to do that, and then he gets popped with the big hit and, and has to leave the game midway through there and, and likely – probably not going to play uh, this weekend. So what are your thoughts on what you've seen from Armani Winfield? And are there any other candidates in that wide receiving core? I know different positions and whatnot, but it, who's a guy that, that maybe you've had your eyes on that you feel like can can play more of a role as far as the passing game goes? Well, we'll go to Keytron first. I thought Cincinnati and last week that finally he, w he was playing to who he should have been. And I was really impressed. And I will say this, guys, the catch that he made that he got hurt, what a catch. Because I'm telling you, that guy put his shoulder. He did lead with his shoulder, but it was right into Keytron's face. Yeah. And you just can't do that. But to hold that ball with a shot like that, uh, that was a phenomenal catch. And I think that was a fourth down, wasn't it? So I, I, I think that was a first down catch on fourth down. Then the week before against Cincinnati, he goes up and gets the ball where he's got two guys on him, both of which – could have been called either of which could have been called for pass interference and he made the catch. So he was just coming on and I hate that. I, I think there's probably no way he plays Saturday uh, after that shot. So Amani Winfield is a guy that was a four-star guy, uh, highly recruited, hasn't had a lot of playing time. And I just think with that experience and playing, he's got ability. There's several of those guys do. Of course, you're missing Hal Presley too with the, with the broken leg. But some of those guys have to step up and make plays and take some of the pressure off of number 80. <laughs> I mean, we've seen what he did. I think I think he even caused a wind in the press box to be broken. <laughs> <We don't laughs> <put> that <out. laughs> so, so he's doing his job. And I tell you, the other thing he's doing, 
guys is he's he's changing coverages in the secondary and is forcing them to make sure where he is and that he's covered and he's taken care of. And with that, Craig, as you said, it makes it even more important for these other guys to beat man coverage because if they're if they're trying to control the guy that can run out there, then everybody else is in man and somebody's got to win. And I think uh, that's we got to figure out who that is and you don't have much time to do that. Ricky, if it were up to you, if Dave Aranda locked your room and said, you have to figure out which running back's going to get the, the most carries, which one would it be? Oh, man, that, that's pressure. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank goodness I'm not in that room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, you, you know what? I, I, I kind of like the way Dominic runs the ball. I, I really think he's got a b- little bit of ability to slash and go. Uh, Richard Reese is the one, though, that if – He's got an opening, he can take it to the house. And I think that's something we've missed is long plays, big plays. Uh, you know, break a run at the line of scrimmage and go 50. We, we just haven't seen that. And uh, Reese is one that can do that. I would like to see him get some more carries. I don't – I'm not in that meeting room. There's obviously a reason he's not. I don't know what it is. I would like to see him get more uh, – Man, we've seen the freshman Pendergrass. I think there there are times when it's good for him to carry the ball. I think his vision is really, really good. I think he's great at finding the open spaces. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, but one of the toughest I've seen. Uh, but I don't know. If, if, if I picked one, maybe Reese, just because of his ability to break it. Ricky, the Big 12 came out with their schedules coming up, uh, and there are some – Long-time rivalries. The one that's getting a lot of the attention is Kansas State, Iowa State, Farmageddon, uh, as they have had forever since 1917. That's going to be interrupted. Baylor will not play Tech every year. They will not play Houston every year, which, of course, had been interrupted anyway. Uh, they do get TCU. I don't know if you even had time to look at it. Have you? I did look at it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, very, very interesting schedule. Uh First of all, I don't I don't know how they ever got it figured out <laughs> with sixteen teams. I mean, just throw a ball up in there and see which name comes down with it. But uh, yeah, you hate to see that, particularly when it's uh, the conference hasn't changed. You just add, you just added teams, but uh, I would have bet uh, whatever I needed to that Baylor TCU continued to play. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect that one would go away. Uh, that's a natural rivalry and neither one of those guys likes each other and never will. So, uh, you know, you hate to see those games go. You just do. But I guess there's no way around it. And I guess eventually maybe even the TC Baylor game skips a year or two if, if you're going to play everybody. And the thing that's hard to measure about these conferences are, that are this big, and I don't know how they'll determine the ch- who plays in the championship game, but it's a little unfair in that these teams have different schedules. We might play three tough teams that Oklahoma State doesn't play. Or we may get three easier games that TCU doesn't play. So uh, that's tough. And that was the only really good thing about this smaller conference was everybody played everybody. The two teams with the best records got in the championship game, and one of them had to win it. So I really like that, and that's going to go away. But that survival and college football right now, and it had to be done. Ricky, thank you. Appreciate your time as always. Enjoy it. Uh, Alliance Banks, Central Texas, uh, again, sponsor of both J.J. Joe on Monday, Ricky Thompson with us on Wednesdays. And uh, 